As Ryan said, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may find yourself if you're over in the East Coast. Uh, today's topic <clears throat> is possibly a little bit different than, than you've seen us uh, grab onto. And uh, the, the reason being that uh, we've, we've done this, one, it, it ties back to uh, uh, our newsletter topic here of, of April 21st. But uh, so that's the reason we're, we're picking that up, and I'm going to dig in a little bit more why we're doing that. But so we're going to start out with a, a short stat, and the stat ties into the, uh, uh, the topics we're talking about. And then there's four areas of uh, learning, and then a, a, a wrap up with some thoughts and so forth, and taking your questions. The strategy stat, like I mentioned, really does tie back into this is from David Allen. Uh, he's a Probably a lot of you get his, uh, his I think it's weekly uh, newsletter update on, on productivity. He's kind of like a productivity guru. And the, the number kind of strikes me, 98% of people feel somewhat embarrassed about their productivity skills and systems. <clears throat> Seems like a, a fairly strong number uh, being embarrassed uh, in, and 98% seems like pretty large. but. As Ryan mentioned before, I do a lot of work in the research area, so I don't want to focus on whether 98% is a good number or if it's 92 or 95, but the point, basic point is we know uh, that, in fact, there's a whole bunch of folks that we're working with that are part of our teams that we're asking to carry out the strategy that's developed. They're not fully, uh, uh, how to say, have their quivers full. Uh, they don't have all the skills and or or necessarily sometimes the overall systems to, to deliver the productivity that's needed. So that, uh, that said, that kind of helps kind of frame where we're going today uh, because we're talking about learning and learning skills and really around uh, learning the skills around strategy. The, uh, before we dive into this, it, it, the reason I, I, that I've wanted to, to participate in this and to, and to bring this, this message it has to do about strategic management. It's, it's not necessarily we're great educators or anything like that. We do do a bunch of training and, and we do do a lot of facilitation, but it has to do, the purpose of, of this learning has to do with strategic management. And I just attended, oh, about a month ago, a, a, a master's class from Kaplan and Norton, the, the founders of the Balanced Scorecard, and a, a a topic, or a topic, a, a stat that came out of it was really striking to me that they said it takes 18 to 24 months to roll out strategic, a strategic plan, strategic management system. So there, 18 to 24 months is a long time, so there's got to be a lot of learning that's going to have to go on. So how do we best accomplish that and get to the point where we want to? Because the reason we're doing this is because of the benefits having a strategic management, not the system, not the plan. The plans are important, but this, we've moved beyond. I think that it's more appropriately called strategic management. And if if we derive the right kind of benefits out of it, like that we have potential, Kaplan Norton found out that uh, at least 70% of the people that do have a good strategic management system outperform their peers. They got a hall of fame that they have anywhere from oh, 10 to 20 people, 10 to 20, 10 to 20 companies each year and organizations that uh, that they select to go in there. And some of those organizations are have like doubled their uh, their revenue or their performance in, in a, a short period of time, let's say like three years, and, and they tie it all back to strategic management. So, so this, if we're talking about change, so how do we do that? We all know change is not easy, and we, learning is a is a real critical uh, part of this. So we got to learn some new skills to bring change in because change is not easy. So there's four stages of of this uh, not, of this, and we're we're going to dig into those, those shortly. Uh, maybe I'll back up here and then talk about these skills that we're really kind of building through these four stages of learning. Uh, as strategy leaders, there's there's a handful of uh, skills that we are building through these these four processes. And I went back and I looked at what strategic thinking really uh, entails, and 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 it, it came very crystal clear to me that it's not something that all of us. Uh, have is, is a normal uh, course of uh, just going through school, getting a degree, uh, whatever. It, 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 to do strategic thinking, we've got to use both sides of our brain, use the left and the right side, which is not easy. 
strategic thinking requires us to take time to get away from things uh, so we can uh, think about what we really need to do for our organizations. We can't be hasty. We can review often. So th those, are, those are steps that, that require some skill building. And, and, and when we have that strategic thinking, then we can have provide a better input into the plan. Uh, it helps us uncover those opportunities and create value for the organization, whether it's a church or it's a nonprofit or whatever else. Uh, it also, when we've got strategic thinking working for us, we've learned it well, we uh, can understand really what, better what drives our, our, our organization. So that's a key part of what we want to learn, strategic thinking. And, and again, like I said, it doesn't necessarily reside with all of us. Uh, another uh, skill that we all need to, to come up with is, is the ability to clearly articulate the right priorities uh, in a way that makes sense. In other words, uh, we have to be able to understand what's, what it's going to take to, to, to bring that vision to our company. I, I just recently had a discussion with somebody on the phone for an hour, and this is a leader of an organization that's got a number of divisions, and at the end of an hour, I still wasn't really sure what the priorities were. The fellow could not clearly articulate it. So how, how could we build a plan and so forth to, to help them move forward? So be, that's another skill that needs to be learned. Then taking those <clears throat> uh, those uh, priorities and then putting them in a daily work and, and, uh, and so we stay at, off of tangents and, and go forward. Uh, this uh, this is definitely helpful. It's it's needed in, in, in organizations that are working with one, one right now. Uh, they've got a great plan, but now they're, they've got to be able to prioritize. They, you know, it's like too many times you got way too much on your table. So what are those ones we want to work with? And then the bottom line, bottom one here is the running or participating meetings, and I think that's a, uh, the essence of what we're what Kim and I are, are going to dig into here because it's all about taking the plan and, 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 and putting feet to it. So this is, like I say, it's the foundation of uh, today's discussion and, and getting the strategic management out into the organization. Because as you know, we've seen the number come out of Kaplan Norton, 95% of the people that we work with don't really understand our strategy. So if we can have a, a regular meeting and, and, and we can, and they can learn and, uh, and, 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 and become more knowledgeable about what we're trying to accomplish and you've got a bigger team moving forward. So the, these four stages, and it's not that we're experts on these four stages at all, but the reason that uh, Kim and I kind of looked at these things and, and liked the, the compartmentalization is that what it does is it helps us understand where the organization is. It isn't that one's good, one's bad. Uh, obviously, it's, there's a couple that uh, we'd prefer to be in, but the point being is where are we? Now, so we can so we can move forward, and we can uh, provide the, the type of learning that needs to go through in, in these meetings. So uh, <clears throat> we don't have a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, organizations that are in stage one, unconscious and confidence, and everybody kind of understands what that is. If you don't know, you don't know. So how are you going to ask a question if you don't know? Uh, Kim's going to dig into the the second one, which is conscious incompetence, and uh, and and I think. That, you, a lot of people will recognize that stage and understand why that uh, that one needs to be unpacked further. Conscious confidence is I know that I know how to do this, and uh, this is a stage of learning is much easier than the second stage because you're kind of moving forward. You're a little bit uncomfortable, but you're you're self-conscious about what you need to do. You need to get a few more of those skills that uh, David Allen was talking about. And kind of, you know, number four is uh, the unconscious, unconscious confidence. In other words, it's almost like autopilot. That's what uh, the title of the today's strategy title is about. It would be nice if uh, uh, a lot of organizations could be there, but uh, not necessarily always where we end up with. So as we go through this, remember that uh, going through this probably stages two through four, maybe not so much in one, we're all going to make mistakes. When we recognize them and we grow from them, that, that's the vital part of learning and, and building a, a great strategic management process. So number one, I know what I, I don't know what I don't know. So there, there's, some, there's some basic things that you can hear when you go around an organization. They, know, they may know that there's something wrong, but they're not sure really what to do about it, what's causing it. So 
what we what you would find, and we don't deal with these organizations uh, very often, but uh, uh, there's resistance to change, and as I mentioned for, before, that uh, strategy is all about change. If 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 you if you're going to put strategy, you're moving from the status quo, you got change. So this is not a great position to be in, but. If that's the case, then uh, you might have to dig a little bit further and bring some outside help in. Uh, any, there's no, there's denial. You don't need any more new skills. There's no sense of urgency. Uh, so you don't know what strategy issues there are. So therefore, you have no idea. You don't want to fix anything. So you just kind of uh, well, almost like the deer in the headlights. You, you know, you're, you're you're kind of stuck there. So what do we do if we find ourselves in that position? <clears throat> Somehow we've got to we've got to bring awareness. That the bottom line of all those notes are you got to bring awareness. And and what I found working with organizations is not to tell them what they're supposed to do because people uh, sometimes are a little irritated about that and you might have found yourself in there. But uh, but I would uh, go about it for more about uh, tell them what we want to achieve. You know what do we want to achieve? And yes, uh, like I mentioned before, the Kaplan and said it takes 18 to 24 months to achieve this. So this could be a little bit of a challenge, but if they know where the target is and where they're trying to go, uh, it'll be a little bit easier to move out of uh, stage one and uh, it, it, at least ways to start the learning process. So uh, this, there's a little bit of a case study here, not that we've worked with many of them, <clears throat> but there's... All kinds of companies, uh, as we all know, any organization probably should have some type of plan, and, uh, and we probably worked, walked in a lot of organizations and or teams departments that they have nothing. They lack the awareness that they're in need of any kind of help. So what does a leader do? He wants to somehow develop this muscle, this thing about strategy, make feel, people feel a little bit uncomfortable and uh, to realize that they need to move forward, times are changing. Uh, we see this occasionally inside of an organization that's a little bit larger and you might find a division that just doesn't want to have anything to do with planning. Uh, and, and the way that uh, that is, is resolved is the learning comes from the outside in when they see their peers uh, moving forward, having performance and so forth. So we, we direct attention in it, within an organizations to uh, different divisions that maybe are, are performing and that is maybe the light bulb will go off and then as a result of that then we'll start moving away from you know wasting resources and sub performance so that's uh, stage one consciously incompetent and I think maybe I find myself that occasionally when I don't have enough coffee but I've had my cup this morning and it's <laughs> going to stage two Kim Stage two, conscious incompetence. This is where a lot of our clients tend to be when they engage with us. Um, I would say this is probably the most difficult and also the most rewarding stage. Um, at the point where recognizing uh, within your organization that you could and should be doing more as it relates to, to planning, strategic decision making, um, execution, effectively moving your plan um, in the next Stage. Uh, what what this might look look like? Um, perhaps you've had a few strategic planning sessions uh, that were not successful. Um, in other words, key decisions were were left unmade. Uh, you never really got to a point where the plan was was fully intact um, at a point to be implemented. Um, or perhaps you you have a strategic plan that was created a few years ago that's been sitting on the shelf. Um, at a point where, where you really need to revisit where you're going as an organization. Um, we get a lot of, of clients who are sort of at a crossroads uh, in terms of strategic direction. Uh, they may have a plan in place, but it's no longer relevant, thinking, thinking about where they're headed and, and possibly even some conflict within the organization um, and really needing to make some decisions collectively and prioritize uh, direction. Um, and then also, you know, very common within the stage, uh, you're doing great, you're successful, um, you're growing, but feeling, feeling the tug to, to be a little bit more strategic to ensure uh, that you remain successful as an, as an organization. Um, so taking a moment to step back and, and think deeper, um, challenge yourselves uh, so that you don't just uh, get too comfortable 
Um, so those are just some examples of what it might look like uh, when you're in this stage two, recognizing uh, the need to do more. Um, and, and so in terms of, of moving uh, beyond this stage two, I would say that the key really is recognizing within your organization what those challenges might be, uh, recognizing where you're at, uh, what, what challenges are, are hindering momentum uh, when it comes to strategic planning or, or the process. And then once you've identified uh, where you're at and your challenges, uh, looking at what tools or skills are needed uh, to facilitate the momentum and to move your organization to the next, to the next stage. Uh, some examples of possibly some challenges and some, some tools or skills to, to help move you to the next stage. Uh, say you've, you've had a few failed strategic, and when I say failed, um, some strategic planning sessions that, that never really went anywhere. Um, we've seen this uh, fairly frequently where you have these great meetings, but it's, it's all talk and no action, no real accountability uh, in terms of, of who's doing what and what's happening next and uh, where do we go from here. Uh, so one example of a, a tool to mitigate that might be um, a strategic thinking exercise. And what I mean by that is rather than a full-blown full strategic planning session, start, start small, choose one strategic issue or topic um, that a decision needs to be made and have a, have a small one or two hour brainstorming session and, and really focus on, on making a decision and then from that decision uh, creating an action plan with clear accountability and, and tactics to get to the next step. So, so having that small success from a small strategic planning session um, is a good start. Also at this point uh, you might want to explore uh, an outside facilitator or some additional uh, resources that can help with facilitation uh, tools. Uh, examples might be, you know, really making sure you're keeping a running list of any pending questions or topics for further discussion. Uh, we call that a parking lot uh, when you're in these, these strategic planning sessions, really keeping track of those items that need to be addressed at a later date so, so you're making decisions and, and moving, moving this forward. Um, another challenge at this stage uh, might be a plan that's, that's sitting on the shelf and, and has not been executed or needs some really push into implementation. Uh, some of the tools here, uh, clear, clear agendas and um, action planning templates, anything that might help move those quarterly uh, strategy reviews, for example, um, into action, so providing, providing your team, your leader, your organization with some simple uh, templates in terms of how to update and uh, keep track of your goals, make notes, um, and, and really leading those strategy review sessions so that you're not mixing uh, strategy with tactics. Uh, so focusing on addressing your strategic plan, whether it be on a monthly or quarterly basis and really digging into it uh, talking about the goals, what changes might we need to make, uh, examples like that. Um, another, another thing to think about while in this stage is perhaps you're pretty comfortable with your strategic plan, you feel like you're implementing it, uh, but feeling a little bit too comfortable as an organization, uh, perhaps really want to dig deeper, uh, think more strategic. This is also common at this stage. Uh, Examples here, um, another strategy, you know, really digging into those strategy sessions, not just getting caught in the rut of updating our status and talking about our goals and how we're doing, but taking the time during those strategy sessions to think beyond your existing strategic plan, thinking about what we can really do as an organization uh, to move us forward to, to compete and to, to go a little bit further and dig Deeper. So those are a few examples of possibly some challenges you might reach at this stage and some, some tools, uh, templates, talking points, um, possibly outside facilitation, 
uh, facilitating strategic planning sessions uh, as a team or co-facilitating, uh, really identifying challenges you're facing and identifying additional skills, tools needed to, to move you forward outside of this stage. Uh, this is a, one, one quick case study, and we have a lot of clients in this, in this stage, but we've been working with a global uh, clothing company who's been doing annual strategic planning sessions uh, year after year with no real follow-through. Um, we recently engaged with them and have facilitated a couple strategic planning sessions, and the main action uh, thus far that has been hugely successful with them is simply a, a running list of decisions we've made and pending actions or pending discussions that we still need to have. And that's been a really, really helpful for them because they've seen the progression of, oh, we've actually made these decisions, we've created some action plans around them, and these are the, the pending topics we're going, to, we're going to discuss at our next strategic planning session and our next quarterly review and, and continue that progress of actually making decisions and, and putting some clear accountability uh, to some of these pending, pending topics that have been lingering for, for years and years. So in that case, it's, it's like keeping strategy top of mind. It, we didn't, they didn't do anything, quote, new. They've just taken the great thoughts they've had, the she think they had, and kind of crystallized them and done something with it. Exactly, yep. Uh, I, two thoughts I, uh, that come to my mind, and I kind of just want to dig into because, as you mentioned earlier, Kim, this is a, an area that we find the vast majority of our, our clients in. The point you made about stepping back because you're too comfortable, uh, I think it's where we find ourselves in, in the U.S. right now is a critical time to do because there's so many opportunities. We, we can get kind of stuck going where we are, and things are probably not too bad, but because we're finding the potential for huge changes in the economic uh, uh, landscape. Uh, I was reading last night that uh, that uh, uh, there is the I think it's the Fed. No, is it the Fed or IMF is is projecting that Barack Obama is going to be the last president to preside over the U.S. as the largest economy in the world. The next. President, whoever it is, doesn't make difference. Has, this has not left or right or anything like that. The next president, whoever that person is, is going to preside over the U.S. is no longer in the driver's seat of the economic growth of the world. And we know number two was China right now, and they're going like crazy. So what does this mean? I mean, stuff changes really quick. So let's not get too comfortable. And so we need to sit, sit back and engage that strategic thinking thing. And the other point that you mentioned to help break out of this is are the agendas. You know. For the for the strategy meetings, and, and I'd like to uh, recommend to folks that on on uh, MSP there's a bunch of information. There's the YouTube videos under the execute your plan part. There's there's agenda to, to to have either a monthly meeting or quarterly meeting and that type of thing. So you don't have to dream it up yourself. The timing in there is everything. So there the tools and resources are, are available right now on on our site. So take advantage of those. Uh, with that said, <clears throat> let's move on to the third stage of uh, conscious competence. And the little quick definition of that is I know that I know how to do this. <laughs> I know that I know how, but I'm going to need a little bit of help. This is this stage is a lot easier than than the stage that Kim talked about. And in, in, you know, from a change standpoint. You know, recognizing the fact that you're in stage two and, and have to, to move out of there and embrace it, that's really the hardest part. And now if you recognize that and made yourself aware of that, that you need to be conscious of the thing that you have to develop this competence, we have to move forward. And this is maybe where a lot of what David Allen's 98% of people might feel themselves a little uncomfortable because they're self-conscious. And, and they don't have uh, those uh, the, the skills and so forth to do out of it, do that. So, uh, what do we do? What does this what does the situation looks like? Uh, uh, we probably have seen some situations. We don't have a lot of clients in in this realm, but uh, they're starting to do some of the strategy meetings on their own, which is great because uh, it gives us a sense of uh, accomplishment. So they're starting to do things. 
They're running them out you know, on their own without assistance, because, and that's great because then they're, they're starting to stay out of the weeds. In other words, as Kim mentioned before, they you know, keep rolling back into the tactics, and we want to stay keep tactics in one part of the meeting or on a different session and a strategy you know, to, to have people looking forward, and that would be uh, the, the key part of the meeting to, to, to bring some new insight into the company. Uh, a lot of a lot of some of the folks in, on the team still need a little bit of help uh, uh, preparing for this. Uh, and again, on our in our system, we've got the automatic reminders that go out, and so that can that can help there. Uh, <clears throat> folks are starting to get you know the the fact that there is a whole bunch of value in this. And I, I go back to a fellow that I've worked with in, inside of Boy Scouts, and he. And, and he said, if you're going to invite me to a meeting and you want me to spend an hour of my time, I look at if I've got value in this meeting, when I get out of it, I've saved myself at least another hour in some other form or fashion. So if I can save myself an equal amount of time, then the meeting was valuable. And if I get more savings or more benefit of it, I have a whole bunch more value in, in, in that realm. So that's where we are. We, we're, we've got stuff going along all right, and we're getting some value out of it. We're starting to see some uh, performance uh, numbers uh, eke up. And we're starting to work on the right things because we're, we've gauged them with our, uh, with our system, and we're tracking them and so forth. And, uh, and, and instead of just doing a bunch of stuff, we're, we're, we're getting some of the right things done. Uh, so what are some of the tips that, that uh, we might uh, – use it in, in a stage like this if we're we're just you know starting to take the the training wheels off uh it's the first point there is you know just make sure you just keep going i uh, have that uh monthly strategy meeting quarterly updates uh, we've got some uh a couple of our, our clients that are or at least these are departments are are doing weekly operational uh one hour meeting so they don't then that doesn't flow as much into the uh, strategy meeting, so that practice they're doing it week after week. Uh, make sure using the system that uh, the reminders are going out. Uh, there's the information on for, uh, there also for them, to, uh, for the, all the team members, to how to update things and, and give them perspectives of, of what they're supposed to be doing. And for sure, don't cancel these meetings. Make sure the deliverables are done properly in time, and that just helps. To keep you know make the change come together. Uh, heard oh, some time ago, it uh, takes 21 days uh, for for a change to become a habit, or 21 times. So uh, that kind of fits into having monthly uh, meetings for a couple of years before you really get this uh, piece of strategy really kind of moving uh, forward on its own. So we're, then we are just consciously competent. We're building those skills that we need to, to, to move forward. A short case study in, in this area is uh, kind of working with a, not kind of, I am working with a, a couple councils right now, and uh, one of them has a pretty good strategy because it's really good council, and, but they've had some change of uh, leadership. So what happened in the change of leadership, because there's a, uh, uh, horses, so to speak, that are being changed and so forth, so they stop, or well, kind of lost a little traction, strategic thinking's not really happening, and uh, the execution firmly was not in place, so it's not, uh, it's not as connected to the plan as it should be. So that's kind of where we find ourselves a lot of it, like I said, because it has to do with uh, change in leadership. Uh, in, the planning process that we've been in, engaged in, we've got a whole bunch of research. We're taking advantage of what's looking, uh, what the environment's looking like around us. So we know things are changing quickly and, and much more rapidly than, than we care to, to uh, really embrace. But we know that if we're going to, uh, to touch a whole bunch of uh, youth in, in the area, that, uh, that we need to use this information for, uh, to develop a really good plan. So as a result of doing this, we've got an executive board and these uh, focus area chairs that, uh, that are, they're really sensing this energy. They, they know that planning is a good thing. They got good information. And, and where they are right now is, is they want to embed the strategy with the execution so they know they can get the results. So they're, they're really, they're conscious about that situation. The, the, the energy's there. They can grab a hold of it. And, and now what they're really doing is they're building that competence to, to, to make this change. 
uh, and, and kind of what we're doing is helping them, so to speak, put the training wheels back on where they were before and using this new information and leadership to, to take this uh, latest strategic plan to the level of uh, really making a difference in their, their local community. So that's a third stage of, uh, and again, it, this is kind of the learning stage where a lot of our clients may be working and, and doing things on their own. And what we really like to help them do is get to the fourth stage uh, uh, where Kim has got some wonderful suggestions, I should say, <laughs> on how to be con unconscious competent. Right. And the only point I would say about uh, stage three is just to really not give up. Um, if you've gotten this far in the strategic management process, uh, you're going to come across some hurdles and challenges. Uh, really stick with it and uh, and don't give up. Um, so stage four, uh, at this point, you're really in cruise control, which is which is great and also uh, challenging at the same time. Uh, strategy is is part of of your organization's rhythm of the business, uh, you're referring to your plan on a regular basis, using your goals and metrics to drive meetings and actions uh, with decision making within the organization. You're having periodic, continual strategic check-ins, having highly uh, strategic conversations, talking about the, the right staff in the organization, um, and you're not mixing up uh, strategy with tactics. So you're really doing great um, in cr cruise control. Really important at this at this stage in the game is is constantly looking at uh, what are we doing well, what's working, and what do we need to to take a look at or or change. Uh, so so staying at this stage is is not just uh, not not just getting too comfortable or, or even getting bored because you're doing well uh, within the process, but really continually taking a look at what we can do different, what we can do better, having those deep conversations, challenging challenging, challenging yourself uh, to, to stay where you are and to only do better and move, move forward uh, without getting too comfortable or staying on autopilot. Uh, we, we have a small case study here about some work we've done with Microsoft. As everyone knows, uh, Microsoft has been the king of of software for for so long, and, and their challenge uh, when they came to us really was keeping keeping that muscle strong. So so yes, we're doing great as a, as an organization, but we see some we see some challenges. We see some need for a little bit deeper strategy and 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 taking some risks and being a bit more innovative to ensure that we keep our muscle strong. Uh, so some of the actions. Uh, taken within the organization to give an understanding of, of how it works. The strategy is developed um, at, the, at the highest level, if you will, and, and handed down to the several different business units within the organization. Uh, so the question uh, was taking a step back and evaluating the process. Is it really working? Is it driving the right behavior, or are we just on autopilot, uh, and what what is happening at this point, and what is working really well, is rather than just taking the strategy that was handed to them, taking taking some time to create v, what they're calling virtual teams. So within the several business units, uh, crossing and and creating teams that go across the various sectors to really discuss. Uh, some strategic issues, challenges, really create some, some innovative ideas of what they can do differently in the next um, one to three to five years to really make sure that they're keeping up with the technology industry and, and keeping up with competitors. Uh, so the, the result really of, of this uh, engagement was the implementation of, of these strategy sessions, including more participants uh, within the organization and across different business units to create new strategy and to think deeper about about where they're going and, and how they can do better. So it's a it's a really good example of an organization that's at that that stage four um, of unconscious competence, but them recognizing at that stage that they have potential to do more, to do better, and um, really driving that strongly. 
right now. So there's there's a couple other case studies we we can certainly discuss uh, if if there is time or um, we want to allow some time for questions within the group. But as a, as a summary and takeaway uh, from all four different stages is really uh, the key is identifying what stage your team is at uh, so that you can then look at what actions you need, what skills, templates, tools you might need to move into the next stage. Uh, certainly, as I mentioned before, uh, stage two is, is where we see a lot of our clients and it's, it's the most challenging and, and rewarding stage. So I would challenge you at that point to to really go slow, um, to go fast. Allow yourself to walk before you run. Don't have expectations that are not realistic and really just embrace the progression uh, and, and allow some grace within your organization. And then as you move uh, forward into to stage three and stage four, uh, always you know, taking a moment to, to, to step back and continuing to challenge yourself uh, to do better. Good. Not necessarily a case study, but a thought that popped up in my mind about uh, stage four, building the muscle and keep it in its shape. <laughs> so many organizations do have the plan, and some of them are in a position like with Microsoft where they're really uh, good in, 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 in executing it. But I, a part of the, uh, the regular meetings and so forth is taking that plan, updating it, keeping it up to, to current uh, situation with inside the organization, uh, readjusting the, the targets that need to be uh, looked at, uh, making sure the measures are really uh, tracking what we want to do, the behaviors uh, that we want to uh, develop. And the reason being, if we keep that up to speed, because I've seen this far too many times in the last couple of years, when you've got turnover, uh, it, it, if, if you've got a good plan, the person that comes into the position has a much better understanding of what's expected for them, where they are, and where they're trying to go. It really makes transition quicker and more efficient. And, and really, that hits me when I think of uh, the Boy Scouts of America, because we've got 300 councils throughout the United States, and uh, the scout executive, or in, in, which is their term, the, uh, the CEO of the, of, of the council, they uh, move uh, quite regularly. And if we have a great plan in place, it stays with the council, and then the next person that's come in, we're expecting them to move the council forward, will have the roadmap right in front of them. So keep this muscle fit, the plan, keep it up to date, keep the targets and measures in place, and, and that way when we have transitions uh, at the top or in the middle, they're much smoother and uh, then we won't skip the beat, and then the learning can continue on whatever of the stages we find ourselves in. Ryan, do we uh, find anybody there that's got a question or two that want to? Uh, yeah, so we have, uh, have a handful of questions that came in. One of the ones that came in just a minute ago, I think it really sets the table on some of the other ones, is what does a strategic conversation look like? We kept talking about elevating that conversation and so I think that's a, a great question to start with. What does a strategic conversation look like? That's uh, in, in a situation I guess we go back to strategic thinking and the strategic discussion uh, we all uh, you know know that uh, we don't want to get into weeds and so forth and so when when I work with uh, the different, whether it be a, a, a team or e even the council and so forth, the strategic discussion that we I try to have them to keep that to look at is what's driving them towards their future, not necessarily what we've got to talk about today, but what's what's going to make a difference when when they move to to the future. What uh, what are these these key milestones that are they're going to be there in front of them as, as, as they move along. Not necessarily what they got to fix today, because we always have a whole bunch of things to fix today, but, but 
taken our eyes and looked at the horizon, that's where I try to, to, to take folks to. Any thoughts on that, Kim? That uh, yeah, when I when I um, just to build on that a little bit, when I think of, of a strategic discussion, to me, um, often we're trying to to solve a strategic issue or topic. I, I a case study or example that comes to mind is we've worked with an, a local art museum uh, that's getting ready to open their doors and they're at a bit of a crossroads in terms of where they focus most of their investment and resources right now. Is it on educational programming or is it on developing the exhibits? And so a real strategic conversation around how we invest right now as we're getting ready to open the doors on this on this museum and where should we really focus our 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 resources um, and so the strategic discussion around that and then coming to coming to a decision and making that decision and moving forward from there to help clarify the strategic direction of the organization uh, so strategic discussions and the greatest part is, is if at the end you can you can reach decision and momentum and accountability uh, and next steps one last thing, Kim. You you said earlier in the presentation. I just it always makes a lot a lot of sense is rhythm of the business, and I forget what client it is, but uh, one client typically we recommend that they separate their their tactical meetings and their strategic meetings, separate those out. But at the same time, we recommend that it does need to be part of the business. And I remember that there was a good best practice for that company, and that they they. They attached the meetings together, but they really separated. They went through their tactical stuff, and then there was a deliberate change to elevating the discussion to um, to a strategic conversation. And I don't know if there's it, if you have any insights on that um, client. On how to shift the conversation, possibly, or um, so yeah. And in terms of the rhythm of the business, it certainly depends on how your organization uh, runs and and what naturally flows in terms of, of a strategic strategic meeting versus an operational meeting. Um, the key is the importance of both. Uh, an operational tactical meeting often happens, you know, even once a week to check in with each other. What are we doing this week? What are the top five things you're working on? What do you need from me? Uh, how can we collaborate? What are we doing um, this week, this month? Whereas that strategic um, meeting in that shift from from the operational tactical discussion into the strategy discussion, whether that happens once a month or once a quarter. Um, I'm thinking of a certain organization that they have a, a weekly meeting every week and then once a month they tack on an extra hour to uh, transition the operational into the strategic discussion. And, and what that transition looks like is either they've got a couple pending um, questions or topics that came up in a previous meeting that they need to address and make decisions on, um, or they're just checking in with, with their goals and metrics uh, to see how they're doing, uh, make any revisions to the plan, see um, if there are any red flags uh, or even some, some successes to, to embrace. So, uh, anything else you want to with, with that, we found that something as simple as when going from the operational to strategic is take a break. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's also incumbent upon the leader to keep the discussion high, up, up out of there. Uh, and also that we found that by the very nature, strategy is not short term, it's long term. If, if the question or the topic or the issue can be prepped, sent out in the agenda uh, beforehand, because a lot of times, these are issues that are going to uh, maybe a couple divisions, and it's not just within one department. It's going to affect a number of different people. And in some situations, you can't necessarily always come up with an answer. But like I'm thinking with this one organization that uh, they're, re they're looking at the, the t their target markets out there, and they're changing dramatically because uh, we know, for example, uh, with youth, that uh, Hispanics are really growing. So then, how do we how do we serve all youth? You know, so it's, it's so it's not some silo thing over here that we got some 
department that translates, you know, marketing goods. It, it, it has to be something that pervades or runs across the whole organization. So what does that look like? How do we make that change? So that's another kind of strategic thing. It might take a couple sessions before we can really come up with some good ideas to, to, to figure out how to, to put feet to that. So uh, again, that would be <clears throat> preparing the, the question and then also having, a, like you mentioned before, a specific break between the operational and, and, and the strategic and it's incumbent upon the leader to make sure that they keep the topic up there and out of the weeds. Mm -hmm. And really a trick is just keeping those strategic meetings theme-based, uh, so focusing on one or two real deep strategic themes uh, versus you know, the operational tactics. So two comments that people added on, uh, participants, participants added to that is uh, also sounds like there has been, has to be some strategic time management, um, which makes a lot of sense and fits into what you guys just mentioned, absolutely. Yep. And then uh, opinion, all strategic conversations center around the mission and the vision of the organization. So elevating the conversation that it- uh, Good point. Helps mm -hmm. drive that, that vision part of it. Really? Um, we have a few other questions. If we don't get to your question, we will uh, follow up with you, but we'll throw one more out there. And I think this one will take the wrap, wrap us up. But so after hearing all four stages, I'm in stage two. Can you rehash how I can move forward? So, <laughs> I think that's, that's there you valid. go, Kim. You're walking through. Uh, so I'm going to pull up stage two here. And, uh, I would say within stage two, um, looking at uh, what that means to you. So recognizing again what what challenges might be hindering your momentum. Um, where are you at in stage two? Are you at a point where you know you need to develop a plan, you're, you're, you've got a clean slate, uh, identifying you know, where you're at. Uh, if it's developing a plan, then what tools and resources um, do I need to move to the next step? If it's at a point where you've, you've got a strategic plan, you need to, to revise it, you need some, uh, some tools to implement it and to get the strategic management process um, alive within your organization. Uh, so step one, identifying where you're at within stage two, uh, and then taking a look at what what tools and resources might you need to move forward. Um, do you feel like you need uh, some, some outside facilitation possibly? Do you feel like you need to team up uh, leaders within your organization uh, to facilitate that process, get some some leadership and some some real buy-in uh, from from your your leadership team within the organization. Uh, really tapping into a lot of the resources at your fingertips through the My Strategic Plan uh, Help section. There's the the strategy guide, um, interactive strategy guide that takes you through all of the phases of the strategic planning process and provides a lot of templates, tools, checklists. Uh, sample agendas, a lot of resources there. So uh, identifying your challenges and then from there identifying what tools, skills, resources you need and taking it, taking it from there. I'm going to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. If I was sitting in this, uh, whoever asked that question, you've got, you gave me some good ideas and so forth. How would I how would I gauge if I was successful at, at, at conquering stage two, that I brought competence into my team? What might that, what would one thing look like, might look like there that I, I did do my job? Well, I'd say depending on where you're starting. So if you're starting with a clean slate, first of all, you've got a, you've got a, a plan with clear priorities, clear strategic objectives, uh, and an organization behind that that was part of the process, um, marching, all marching to the same beat, uh, actively looking at the plan, then, you know, one to three to four months later, how are we doing against it? How do we need to revise it? Having quarterly uh, strategic check-ins. Um, if, it's, if it's with the, again, depending on what stage you're at, if you're at the global, um, clothing company, for example, we're taking baby steps. So yes, they have a strategic plan. Has it been uh, 
implemented, not necessarily, but we're starting with uh, continual strategy sessions to make some key decisions that are really critical in terms of, of moving the plan forward. Uh, so those are a couple examples of, of what success might look like. I think it's being realistic with your expectations in terms of where you're at as an organization. Um, maybe you can't expect to have this perfect, beautiful plan three months from now that's um, that's part of the organization. Maybe you need to, to take some, some baby steps uh, to get there and to engage people uh, on your team. So if, if I hear, kind of summarize it, it, it would be like, have a, make sure you get a plan. Mm -hmm. and, and if it's the first rattle out of the box, we know it, 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 it's going to be fine-tuned on the road. So a plan is important. But then, the, then the, the actual success would be the baby steps you're talking about, of, of some type of implementation. Right. So, you know, we've done it a couple times, three, four, to get people to start on, on, you know, with us and moving down that path. And that kind of, we move beyond the plan on the shelf. Paper. We've yeah. taken it out, we've sat down, people are starting to understand it. Get strategy starting to kind of eke in and grab a hold of a few people. And then, then we would have started bringing some kind of strategy competence into our, our organization. Right, and that clear success for a plan, uh, get your button down, your, your framework, your mission, your vision, and those, those three to five year strategic objectives. What are the five big rocks um, in terms of how we're gonna achieve our, our vision or, or at least get close to it and really get concrete on those strategic objectives in the big rocks and then build from there. And one comment that was just uh, typed in by a participant, and so I'll read that, and then we can hand it off back to you, Kim, to, to wrap up here. But uh, performance measurement review based upon goals set to attain a certain level of competence. So just going back to what you just said, Howard, it's a, it's a performance measurement review as you're continuing to, to drive that forward. Um, set the, the measurements and then, then review it. Uh, so. no, that's a good point. So if we're measuring it and we're, you know, and if people are being successful in accomplishment, that, that's one way that we get in a report card. So, it's so. Mm -hmm. so why not? Um, so the next huddle, I will wrap this up. The next huddle date will be May 25th, same time, same place. Uh, as always, we welcome your questions, um, articles, topics that you'd like to discuss. So go ahead and send those our way. Um, the shameless plug always, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We appreciate the conversation, like to hear from you. And if you're interested in 